Welcome to PHP for Beginners. This is first of the seven part series. In this lesson, I will discuss what is PHP and why do we need it. PHP is probably the most popular scripting language on the web. It is used to enhance web pages. With PHP, you can create username and password login pages, check details from a form, create forums, picture galleries, surveys, and a whole lot more. PHP is known as a server-side language. That's because PHP doesn't get executed on your computer, but on the computer you requested the pages from. The results are then handed over to you and displayed in your browser. Other scripting languages you may have heard of are ASP, Python, and Perl. You don't need to know any of these to get started with PHP. In fact, no programming experience is necessary to follow these tutorials. The abbreviation PHP probably stands for Personal Home Page Tools. There are also other explanations available for that. Before you can write and test your PHP scripts, there is one thing you will need, a server. Fortunately, you don't need to go out and buy one. But since PHP is a server-sided scripting language, you either have to get some web space with a hosting company that supports PHP, and most of them do now, or make your computer pretend that it has a server installed on it. We will use the later approach. We will be using a free software called EasyPHP. This allows you to test your PHP scripts on your own Windows computer. So what is this whole PHP business all about? PHP is a program that gets installed on top of your web server software. It works with all versions of Apache, Microsoft IIS and other server software packages. You use PHP by inserting PHP code inside the HTML that makes up your website. When a client visits a web page that contains this code, your server executes it. That's why you need to install your own server in order to test PHP locally. Users don't need any special plugins or anything to see your PHP in action. It gets to the end user as regular old fashioned HTML. PHP is a scripting language like HTML. That means the code does not need to be compiled before it gets used. It gets processed on the fly as necessary. So what kind of things can PHP do? Many. For example, it can take info from web-based forms and use it in many different ways. For example, store it in a database, create conditional pages depending on what the form said, set cookies for later use, it can authenticate and track users. It can run threaded discussions on your site. It can serve different pages to people using different browsers or devices. It can publish an entire website using just a single layout template. It can also serve XML pages. So let's talk about the software you would need. Go to easyphp.org and right on the front page you will see a link for downloading easyphp. This is the link you would pick. Uh, just download the software, put it on your uh, computer someplace and uh, the installation is pretty straightforward. You would be downloading a file something like easyphp-5.3.2i-setup uh, this is the file I downloaded in August of 2010. If you're going to be downloading it later, you may get a, a slightly different and newer version. Once you have the file available on your computer, double click on it to run the installer. And when you run the installer, it, was, it is going to essentially ask you one question. And that is, where do you want to install EasyPHP? I would suggest not using the program files folder. Uh, I, rec I recommend installing it at some top level folder. For example, I installed it at 
PHP file folder in my hard drive C. Running EasyPHP. Go ahead and select the EasyPHP from the start button and uh, get the software started. Now remember that uh, this is not going to run like Microsoft Word or Excel and uh, it will not show up on your screen. This is going to be running in the background as a service. So what will happen is that it will show up in your sysdre and you can move the mouse pointer over that and it may tell you that the software is already running. Once this is running then you are ready to now start creating PHP pages. So whatever the files that you are going to be creating you will place them in the www subfolder under where you installed it. For example, C PHP 5. This is where I installed it. And I'm going to be storing all my files at that location. Okay, so we are ready to create our first PHP script. Go ahead and type this code that you see in front of you using a notepad or a text pad editor. As you can tell, most of it is all HTML except one line of code which has this special PHP begin and PHP end tags which contains a PHP statement. Echo is for printing and it says uh, it'll print hello world on a new line uh, on a new paragraph. Go ahead and type that in carefully and save that one as hello.php remember the file must have the PHP extension at that location. Then you cannot run this file by double clicking on it. What you need to do is to open the browser and type in this URL http colon two slashes 127.0.0.1 slash hello.php that's what the URL should look like in your uh, browsers and when you run that one what you would get is this output it basically was generated by the PHP code that you wrote. Now what is this 127.0.0.1? It is the standard IP address used for a loopback network connection. This means that if you try to connect to 127.0.0.1 you are immediately looped back to your own machine. 127.0.0.1 is also referred to as localhost meaning this computer. This allows you to test PHP code on your own computer. When you are done testing PHP make sure you right click on that icon in the sys tray and click on the stop button. Click on the stop item. This would stop the PHP from running. You could also completely exit out of that. If you exit out of that you will have to restart the application. If you stop it then you can restart it for more testing. Here is another little PHP program. Um, I'm not going to try explaining this but go ahead and type that in. Save that one as a file called nice.php at the same location and go ahead and run it. Uh, just like the way we did it earlier. Uh, I would let you figure out what it does. I'm sure it, it is pretty straightforward to figure out what this file is going to be doing try running it on different days you know what what does it do when you run it on a Friday or a Sunday or any other day that was a quick introduction to PHP we figured out how to install easy PHP and be able to run our own PHP script on our own computer using our own computer as a server so what is next now I will talk about PHP language a little more so that we can start writing more interesting application using PHP. Please visit techedguru.com. The site contains tutorials on many different topics Java, C Sharp, Visual Basic and so on. Thank you.